Hey, Homer, your robot body finally came. Oh, time. So we all know The Simpsons has been known to predict the future. How they do it, absolutely no idea. From predicting Donald Trump as the next American president back in 2000 to predicting the Super Bowl halftime show, it makes you wonder how the heck are they doing it? Well, how's it going you guys? I'm your host for this one, Landon Do Not Sing, and welcome back to another most amazing top 10 video. Let's not waste any time here and let's just jump right into this one. This is the top 10 Simpsons predictions that came true. And you know what, let's have fun with this one. Starting us off at number 10, we have when The Simpsons predicted that Canada would legalize weed. So this prediction came from a 2005 episode during its 16th season on The Simpsons, where the Canadian version of Flanders offered weed to the American version. Watch. Well, circle cut my bacon. Look at all these Yankee doodly dandies. Is there another Vietnam going on? Hello, neighboring. Say, would you like to puff on a reeferino? It's legal here. They warned me Satan would be attractive. Back in 2005, it seemed very unlikely that a country would legalize such a drug. Uruguay was actually the first country in the world to legalize the sale of cannabis for recreational use, and that wasn't until 2003. Canada became only the second country to follow Uruguay to legalize weed. So back in 2005, that was a very bold accusation by the Simpsons to make. And I was doing some research to see if any other countries legalize weed, and I was reading about Netherlands, and it was pretty it was a pretty interesting read and tell me if I'm wrong well apparently cannabis in the Netherlands it's actually illegal although we all believe that it was legal recreational consumption of the drug is tolerated I mean you can buy some at coffee shops it just seems like in the Netherlands so many people smoke weed that cops they just don't have the manpower to arrest everyone and they usually don't arrest people anymore as long as you have just a little bit of it something like five grams but if police officers want they can confiscate I'm not sure if you would get ticketed. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't get arrested. All right, number nine, The Simpsons predicted Toys R Us shutting down. It was actually pretty funny in how they showed that Toys R Us were shutting down. All they did was they went up a ladder and they turned the R around, and then it, it, that, that means it shut down. Why don't you all fade away? Yeah, that was my reaction when I heard Toys R Us were shutting down. I was pretty sad about it. But for some reason, Toys R Us here in Canada, they're still around. So I did a little bit of research. Toys R Us has been around for over 70 years since the 40s, which sucks because it's technology, it's our lazy generation that is getting these big companies like this to shut down. People can just order on Amazon and online. I actually miss Blockbusters where you can actually go into the store, you can check out the new releases and you can rent them. But now I just sit in front of Netflix all day trying to pick what I want to watch. Going back to Toys R Us, the company's North American operations filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy production back in 2017. In 2018, they added their British operations into that as well. Earlier on this year, they announced that Toys R Us will be shutting down all of its US and British stores. I think by now most of them have been shut down. And for up here in Canada, well, we'll see what happens. At number eight, somehow The Simpsons predicted the Nobel Prize winner. Oh. We're watching the Nobel Prize announcements live from Stockholm. Oh, the Nobis. <laughs> for economics, Jagdish Bhagwati. In the pool. Lucky. Milhouse is a pure genius and a psychic because he predicted the winner of the Nobel Prize back in 2010, which is six years before Holstrom actually won. Holstrom won the 2016 Nobel Prize in economics for work on contact theory and how to evaluate whether things should be government run or privately owned. It is in two ways because I think the, the, the first revolution occurred in 91 uh, when we had had almost 25 years of counterproductive policies, uh, which had before actually, before, before 91. Number seven, back in 1998, the Simpsons episode, Lard of the Dance, you can see Homer and Bart Simpson decided to recycle grease for money. Sold it all to the rendering plant. People buy grease? Oh yes, they use it to make products such as soap, cosmetics, baby food. Used grease is worth money? <gasps> Then my arteries are clogged with yellow gold! So after Homer found out that the grease can be sold for money, he started his own operation. And I get my money from grease. What's the problem? Wow. Look at that load of grease. Boy, if we're ever gonna earn paper money, 
we have to expand our operation. Well, this actually became reality years later. In fact, 15 years later, people were caught stealing grease from restaurants in order to make some money. Listen to this. Soaring gasoline prices spawn a new kind of bizarre crime, <laughs> the stealing of grease. As in restaurant grease. Is this real life right now? Who the heck is buying restaurant grease? Well, apparently you can actually use grease to run your car instead of gas. So with the gas prices going up in New York, people actually started stealing cooking grease. So just when you thought you've heard it all. The Simpsons predicted the Rolling Stones will be on tour in 2010 during a 1995 episode. This bold prediction that came true is at number six. During the episode titled The Lisa's Wedding, there was also a scene where she was lying in bed and beside her was the Rolling Stones poster. And on the poster it said, Steel Wheelchair Tour 2010. We're both studying the environment, we're both utterly humorless about our vegetarianism, and we both love the Rolling Stones. Yes, not for their music, but for their tireless efforts to preserve historic buildings. Okay, did you guys see it? The Rolling Stones have had an incredible run. They've been touring since 1962. They are actually still touring today. Right now they're on their no filter tour. There doesn't seem to be any slowing down despite their age. During the 2010 episode, it looked like they were done touring after their successful Bigger Bang tour. At the time, it was the highest grossing tour of all time, earning over $550 million. And just when it seemed like the Rolling Stones, well, they might have been done touring, they toured again five years later, just like The Simpsons predicted. The legendary Mick Jagger is 75 years old, and he's still rocking out. And his concert tour will end next year, in June. The drummer for The Rolling Stones, Charles Robert Watts, is 77 years old, and he's still beating the drum. The three-eyed fish prediction that came true is next up at number five. Well, this is my day, and we we do, sir. <laughs> All right, we eat tonight. <laughs> Wait a minute. So that was one of the earliest episodes. That was episode 17 during season two. And it was when Bart caught a three-eyed fish. Little did we know that years later, it would become reality. 21 years after the episode aired, a fisherman in Argentina caught a three-eyed wolf fish. Here's a picture of it. It was caught in a reservoir near a local nuclear power plant. So that explains a bit. The fisherman caught the fish in the dark and didn't realize its third eye until he looked at the fish with the flashlight and he was totally shocked. He thought he caught a rare specimen but it was just a fish that was affected by the exposure to the water from the nuclear power plant. So this fish, it like totally mutated. I don't know if it was like evolving. And you know what? The Simpsons called it. Even in this episode, you can see the power plant. And this made headline news in Springfield, just like it made headline news in real life. Number four, the Simpsons predicted FaceTime years before FaceTime was even a thing. Take a look at this picture right here. This was from the Lisa's wedding episode on the Simpsons that aired back in 1995. This was 12 years before before the iPhones or smartphones even came out. The Simpsons predicted that one day people will be able to communicate through a video on their phones. Marge Simpson is seen here in a video on one of those really old phones. You know the phones that you had to put your fingers in the hole, you gotta turn it around and dial. I don't really know how it works. I've seen it in a museum one time and I remember seeing it at my grandma's house. Skype didn't even come out to 2003. So having a video call with someone was just unheard of. It was very futuristic. The Simpsons are for sure well ahead of their time. They know exactly what's happening and when. Now at number three, we have The Simpsons predicting Guitar Hero. Take a look at this picture right here. This was aired in 2002. You can see Mick Jagger and Keith Richards giving Homer Simpson a jacket that has Guitar Hero printed on the back of it. Three years after the episode aired, Guitar Hero actually came out. I don't know if the name of the game was inspired by The Simpsons, but it's pretty weird. What are you doing? Playing the Guitar Hero. So that was actually one of the advertisements for Guitar Hero. I remember when this game came out and it was so sick. I got kind of good at Guitar Hero, but then I stopped because I think I just got used to all the same songs. I never really produced more of it. And I don't even know if they still produce newer Guitar Heroes, like versions, or if they've released more songs into the game. Roy's Tiger Attack is up next to number two. We hate to see this next one. So that aired during the fifth season. Well, 10 years after that episode in 2003, this happened. October 3rd, 2003. 
Roy Horn near death and rushed into emergency surgery. Well, during the show, it was said that Roy was attacked by his own tiger, just like the Simpsons predicted. Well, there's actually an update on this story. Roy spoke about what happened 11 years after the tiger attack. Roy, who is German American, is a magician and entertainer, and he works with his partner, Siegfried. There are videos online of the tiger attack during one of his shows, but everything wasn't what it seemed. So Roy actually passed out on the ground, and the tiger noticed Roy not moving, so the tiger grabbed Roy by his throat, like tigers do with their cubs, to try to help them. Well, you know what? Let's hear Roy himself tell the rest of the story. Well, yeah, he, he, he took care of me. He said, my, my, my artery is absolutely blessing because there's going to lead to blood pressure. I wish you would be brain dead. You were saying the doctor was saying that had Montecor not relieved the pressure, you would not have lived? So when everyone thought the tiger attacked Roy, the tiger actually saved his life. Doctors said that if it wasn't for the tiger relieving the pressure in his head, Roy would have been in a vegetable state. I mean, it's so crazy. So I guess the Simpsons, like, they sort of half predicted this one. Finally, number one, we have the donut-shaped universe theory. How the heck did the Simpsons predict this one? Imagine they also predict the flat earth theory as well. I mean, maybe they have. Your theory of a donut-shaped universe is intriguing, Homer. I may have to steal it. Wow, I can't believe someone I never heard of is hanging out with a guy like me. So it was Homer Simpson that came up with the donut-shaped Earth theory. And you know what, it was amazing seeing Stephen Hawking making another appearance on The Simpsons. He has made so many of them. I'd say, my IQ is 199 for crying out flame. 198, 197. Big deal, my IQ is 280. <gasps> Stephen Hawking! Well, there you guys have it. We made it to the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys all in the next most amazing top 10 video.